give us all that God has given him on this day. So let's get ready. Let's receive the man of God as he comes in his own way for part two. Amen. 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 Y'all ready? Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> That sound is so good. Yeah. That sound is so good to hear that come from your voices. Yes, thank you. But you got to do that every day. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Prep yourself yeah. to be ready. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Now let me let me share this. I'm gonna just throw this in. Mm -hmm. I like throwing stuff in. If you're gonna do this. Be on time. No. <laughs> you, you listen, y'all. We can't listen. If you if if service starts at nine, come on. You 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 can't come in at eight forty five yeah. and think uh -huh. you're on time. Now, right. if service starts at nine, you listen. You don't know what you got to do. You least need to be two hours to an hour and a half. Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God. What was that? What was that? Do y'all know that this is kingdom building? Now listen, 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 listen. Now you at your own house. Do what you want to do at home. This is God's house. Get in the house of the Lord before your leader gets there. Sometimes that's an hour. Sometimes that's an hour and a half. Sometimes that's two hours. But if you get there 30 minutes before they get there, you late. You are late. You are late. God don't operate like that. See, God operates in the spirit of excellence. And if you want excellence, you got to practice it every day. You got to practice it till you get it down. See, listen, in the secular world, you're not going to come in there and, and, and every day you got to be there at 8 o'clock and you come in 5 after. Let me tell you, in a minute, somebody going to pull you to the side and say, baby, we appreciate you, but we don't need you no more. It's better to be early than to be late. Now I'm going to start off with that. It's better to be early than to be late. Now I don't know what the time frame y'all work on or what church you go to, but whatever, whichever one you work on, you should at least be there an hour before service starts. We got people, our service don't start tonight. We got people to come on the parking lot at 6 o'clock. Bless your heart. Uh -uh. <laughs> See, but these are parking lot people. Yes. These are these are parking lot attendants. They got to be there a little bit early than the normal folks. But we got folks coming in as early as six in the morning. Six, seven, and eight. They coming in there. And if you're gonna build a ministry bigger than your community. You listen, God said we should have nations. See, you start small, but He said, despise not the small beginnings. You understand what I'm saying? He, so you start small, but let God enlarge your territory. You understand what I'm saying? You don't know what God has placed in the visionary. Right. You don't know where God is going to take you right. in the next five years. 
the next 10 years. See, leadership plan, leadership don't plan for year to year or every six months. We plan for five years, three years, five years, 10 years. We, as a leader, you plan like that. That's the way your household should be operating. I'm going to throw that in there too. See, I ain't got to get no amens. I got an amen inside of me. I, got, I keep an amen inside of me. Let me tell you something. The truth hurt, but the truth will set you free. You understand what I'm saying? Get in on time. Whatever the time frame is, get here on time. Be ready for whatever occurs. Yes. Amen. 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 Okay. Jesus. <laughs> Being called or chosen. Everybody is not called. Now, some are chosen. And pastor might see something in you that you don't even know that's in yourself. Well, that's being chosen. When you have a call on your life, you know the call. You understand what I'm saying? Well, I don't know whether you ain't called. You ain't called. See, stay right there till, the, till you get called. And if you ain't called, be chosen. Oh, yeah. See, what happens is people say, well, I'm called. Then they get in there and mess up. Well, I guess I wasn't. <laughs> See, you got to know when you're doing God's business. I knew I was called to this. I told my wife I was called to this. I told her, I said, baby, I'm called. This is not a job. I'm called to this thing. This is bigger than a job. Right. Mm. See? And I had to give her a word. God gave me a word to give her a word. So that she would understand the call that was on my life. Mm. See, because what you don't want to do is, you call, she don't understand. Every time you go home, it's argument. Wow. 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 My Lord. That's the trick of the enemy. See, the enemy is cunning. And if you don't explain yourself in the right way, he'll have it a mess. He'll turn this thing into a mess. So the, the, you either call or you chose. Amen? Amen. Now, a man maketh room for himself and bring him before great men. This is your gift. This is your gift. Amen. See, whatever you have a passion for, mm -hmm. that's your gift. Right. And see, you might it might take you a minute to figure it out. So don't get in no hurry. You got to be prayerful. You got to sacrifice. You got to be committed. And you got to know that you know that you know. This ain't no guessing. See, you don't play with God's business. All right. We don't do that. If you're not called, then wait till you are chosen. See, and here's how you, you know that you're either called or chosen. You'll start operating in your gift before they get you. You'll start, you'll start, do, oh, I got to do this. Oh, oh it's, it'll be all over you. You just have to do it. If it ain't nothing but picking up trash, if it ain't nothing but attending the parking lot. See, you don't think people are called to that, but people are called to that. The ministry is that large where you ain't got to, you ain't got to fight over your position. You ain't got to fight over it. See? So if you ain't called, 
Stay in your place until you're chosen. God, God knows what he's doing. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Proverbs 18 and 16 talks about this. Know your gift. If you got a gift, know what it is. Yes. It would be crazy for you to have a gift and not know it. <laughs> but let me tell you something. The lack of knowledge will make you look crazy. And you got to know what your gift is. I'm gifted to do this. I'm called to do this. Guess what? It took me 27 years to do it. See, I held a spotlight on Bishop Jakes for 27 years. 27. I didn't get tired. I didn't get lazy. I wasn't shiftless. None of that. You need the light? Guess what? I got it. You going this way? I'm going this way with you. And people was talking in my ears. Oh, you got a preacher's voice. What that mean? <laughs> what that mean you got a preacher's voice? I don't need to hear that. You're not going to persuade me like that to go out and open up a building and try to be a pastor when I ain't called to pastor. So I've been a servant the whole time. They used to say to me, you bishop's right hand man. I don't mean nothing to me. I'm God's man. Amen. See, they forgot this ain't about bishop. Right. This is about God's business. Amen. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. Know your gift. Be confident with your gift. Now you can't have a gift and be stumbling around with it. <laughs> if you got a gift and God bless you with it and you know how to use it, you, you got to bring it forth. Yes. You got to use the gift. Yes. And sometimes it ain't always you being in the public side. Right. 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 Sometimes you got to work behind the scenes. Yes. And don't nobody see. Right. Like I told you on the first part, if you're going to be an a, a armor bearer, an adjutant, an assistant, you operate just like a ghost. They yes. see you, but they don't see you. Yes. You're not the important person now. Yeah. You get in, you get out. That's how you operate on those levels. The pastor and the visionary of the house is the person that they put their eyes on. Yeah. Now, you got the Bible and you carry the pastor's Bible up to the pulpit. Because the past is coming up late. But you're going to take your time. <laughs> now you done got your pimp on. <laughs> Taking the pastor's Bible and notes to the pulpit. Who are you? Number one, you out of order. In and out. Get it up there, get out the way. What you say? Get it up there and get out the way. You are not the one that we're looking to. You understand what I'm saying? So if you go to pimping, you done made a mistake. And see, you be in the service like that, I said, trip him, God. I, listen, listen, listen. I, listen, I know they're going to have to edit some of this. I know they're going to have to edit some of it. 
I know that. Come on. Listen, listen, I'll be right there if you trip him, God. Trip him. Make him stumble. Because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Right. You got a hidden agenda. Right. You got to trust God with your gift. If you got a gift, use it. If you're going to use it, trust God. Yes. Now, trusting God means you got to seek his face. Right. And you can't seek God's face once a week. Oh, oh. what you say? You seek God's face every day. God, it's me. Guess what? I'm seeking your face, God. I need to know. How would you have me to handle this? Yes. What you want me to do? How you going to use me today? All that you can get out of me, get the glory. Yes. I don't mind being crushed today, God, yes. if that means that you're going to get the oil out of me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, ain't nobody praying like that no more. That ain't nothing but old school. See, you, in order to get the oil, the oil ain't coming out unless it's crushed. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So in order to find out what your gift is and how great you are with your gift, there's got to be some crushing. Yes. Yes. God ain't going to hurt you whether it comes from him or whether he allows the devil to do it. God's going to get the glory. Amen. All that I went through was to show God that he could get the glory out of my Amen. life. Right. Yes. Amen. All that I've been through, and, and I'm still doing dialysis three days a week, four hours every other day. And I don't look like a dialysis patient. a respecter of person. If he did this for me, he waiting on you. Oh, yes. Yes. yes, sir. But you got to say, God, here I am. Yes. You got to raise your hand to God. Say, use me, Lord. How? See, you can't tell God to use you, and then you're going to tell him how to use you. Wow. It don't work like that in the kingdom of God. If you're going to ask God to use you, he got to use you any way that he can. Right. Two decades of sickness. Two yes, decades. I hear you. Two decades of it. Yes. But I never turned my back on him. Come on now. And let me tell you something. I was taking, I'm still taking insulin <laughs> shots right now. But guess what? It ain't going to be long. It ain't gonna be long. I was, I was taking, I was taking five, five different blood pressure medicines for fifteen years. Fifteen years. Last year, God took me off of all of them, but a half a pill. One thirty-seven over seventy-two. One twenty-six over sixty-five. Thank you. And my blood pressure used to read, I mean, two ten over over one hundred. Don't tell me what God can't do, y'all. You have to trust him when you can't trace him. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. God's word is true. Amen? Amen. Amen. No hidden agendas. <coughs> no hidden agendas. I cast it down in the name of Jesus right now. I come against it in the church in the name of Jesus. I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. I cast down all hidden agendas. 
And if you had one, it ain't going to work. I just tasked it down. Now let me tell you something. If you have a hidden agenda, then what you're trying to do is, you say, well, I'm going to do this to get to there, and I'm going to do there to get to pastor. And once I get to pastor, maybe she'll let me, she'll see that I got the good in me, and maybe I can start my own church. That's a hidden agenda. People do it every day. If you're going to do this, serve with an open heart. And let God lead you to what he has for you to do. But I cast down every hidden agenda right now in the name of Jesus. I cast it down in Jesus' name. Amen. Being confident in who you are and not, and not intimidated by other positions or titles. Do y'all know what that means? Yes. Have confidence in who you are. Yes. If you are usher, be the best usher that you can possibly be. Whatever you are called to do, be the best at it. Yes, sir. I've always felt like I was the best. Yes. The best at it. If I wasn't, guess what? I was trying to be. Yes, sir. That's the God's truth. If you're not going to be the best, what you doing? Why are you here? Have you bought into this ministry? What? Have you bought into it or do you just come because it's convenient? It's close to your house. What? See, if you're going if you to get into this ministry, you got to buy into it. In other words, you should have stock in it. It's just like an investment. Yes, sir. Yes. It's just like an investment. If you ain't got stock in it, why are you here? Right. You looking for a boyfriend? Oh. Or you looking for a girlfriend? What you doing? Right. See? Come on. Make it plain. But you gotta buy into it. Now let me tell you something. If your pastor is preaching every week, whether it's Wednesday or Sunday or Tuesday and Sunday or whatever, it don't matter. They bring in that word, they bring in that word, you getting your mail delivered, they delivering your mail to you. And see, that's how you can tell you're in the right place. When your mail is being delivered week in and week out, you say, shoot, I ain't, this is my mail. Everybody is looking for their mail. Mm -hmm. wow. It's not about the choir. Wow. Come on. What? Good work. It's not about the psalmist. What? It's the word of God yeah. that sustains us. Yeah. So you find the place where you are getting that mail every week. Every week, you go in there. When we started going to, to uh, Bishop Jakes' church, he said, come on and visit me. We went to visit, and uh, we were sitting in service. He was an elder then, and uh, he started preaching. And uh, I wasn't saying nothing to my wife, but I was looking at her. I was just looking over at her, because he was all in my business. Right. Okay. All in my business. And... Uh, Finally, before the service was over, I said, baby, have you said something? <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, have you said something to Elder Jakes about me? And she looked at me like I was half crazy. She said, well, what are you talking about? She didn't know. See, but it was a setup. God was setting me up. Hallelujah. So, okay, we leave. And we see a couple of friends of ours, and uh, I'm going to get on to the next slide. We leave and go, uh, go back to our own church, and then two weeks later we go back to his church again. 
and the same thing happened again. He just read my mail. Just read my, he just delivered my mail. Here you go, Mr. Gray. Here you go, Mr. Gray. Here's a little bit more. Take this with you. Take this with you. And the next thing I know, I said, baby, have you said anything to him? She said, no. No, I ain't said nothing to him. So we asked some friends. I said, is church like this every Sunday? She said, child, yes, church is like this every Sunday. I mean, the Holy Ghost shows up every Sunday. And we walked and got in our car, and I said to my wife, I said, they lied. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I know that ain't right, right, but I found out that it was true. Because right. yes. he was delivering my mail. Yeah. And we was already in a good church. I'm not talking about you changing churches and nothing like that. I'm just giving you an example. Where I was at, God was getting ready to elevate me. Does this make sense? So he was elevating me, and I didn't know it. But finally, when it came time to go, he said to me, it's time to go. I said to my wife, baby, it's time to go. And the we all cried and boo-hooed at the old church. But let me tell you something. God was right. He was, it was time for him now. When you get in your mail, stay right there. Don't let nobody run you out your church. I don't care what they say to you. This is your church. Stay your ground. Amen. Customize to fit your leader. Every leader is different. Every leader is you. I can't customize. Bishop Jake's schedule to fit Pastor Purnell's schedule. That's not going to work. So if you're going to customize it, once again, you got to have that rhythm. You got to get that beat. You got to know their, their, their ins and outs, their ups and downs. And you do that from the pulpit. You don't have to be in their house right now. You learn a person by the anointing that they carry. Yes. I had somebody say to me, well, I want to know Bishop. I said, come, come to Bible study. Right, right. I said, come, come, come to church and you'll know your pastor. Well, this is such a big church. No, it ain't. You don't want to commit. See, you know your leader by the anointing that they carry. Yes. Amen? Amen? So you want to tailor to your leader. Do they travel? If they don't travel, do, do, can you assist them with stuff in the office? Can you make sure that things are ready halfway at home? Can you help with the kids? Anything like that to assist. See, you don't understand the pressure the pressure that leaders and pastors have yes. to deal with. Number one, they deal with you. Amen. <laughs> you got an attitude. Now your disposition is out of place. Come on. But they still love it on you every Come day. On, Mr. See, you don't see that. Oh, pastor got it. Have you asked? Have you asked? Can you assist? <laughs> See, you you got to have your heart right to do the thing. And sometimes you ain't got to be in the house. Right. Right. Do something at the church. Yeah. Do something at the church. Yes. Mm. Amen. Please. See? <laughs> if you go into the office, get there before your leader gets Amen. there. Get there before, and y'all y'all heard me talk about this. If you get there 10 minutes before they do and, and they don't know it, you're still late. You're late. So get there before, give yourself enough time to make this work. Amen? You might sort out mail. You know, before your pastor gets there, you might do something simple. You might, you know, uh, pack letters 
If, if they sending out something and they don't have enough volunteers, volunteer. Amen. Give up your service. Yeah. It's a shame that pastors and leaders have to do all of this themselves. Yeah. That's why they burn out. Because yeah. they don't have no help. And you sitting up in the pews with your cute set. I'm going to tell y'all something. You can't be cute when you're fighting this devil. Now, you can't be cute when you're fighting this devil. Now, he might not be resting with you right now, but stick around. Stick around. It's going to come at you. And you're going to wish that you had done something before the battle came. You're going to wish that you had gave of your service, your time, your effort, your energy before the battle came. See, it's a time for everything, but the foolishness got to go. Speaking engagements, meetings. Arrive before the leader do. The reason you want to arrive before they do is so that you can give them a heads up. You never let your leader walk into a cold room. Never. You never let your leader walk into a room and don't know what's happening. And then they get attacked from the left or from the right because you wasn't there to set them up and tell them, well, Pastor, this is what's going on. The service is running fine. The parking lot is half full. And and, 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 and and the congregation is three quarters full. Give them information that they can use. Yes. Wow. Wow. Amen. That's good. You let them come in. They don't know where the service is at. They don't know that the parking lot is half full because they come in the back way. They got to know. This is your leader. This is your pastor. This is leadership. So you got to give them pertinent information. They make decisions based on the information that you give them. If you give them wrong information, they make a wrong decision. And guess what? The blood going to be on your hands. So if you're going to be in leadership, act like it. Amen. Wow. Support. Exodus 17 and 12. But Moses' hands became heavy, so they, Aaron and Hur, took the stones and put under him and supported him, one on each side. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That's what we in leadership do for our pastors. Mm -hmm. See, it was a battle going on and every time that Moses' hands dropped, uh -huh. they were losing the battle. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, if you're going to be supportive, be supportive to the max. All right. Do what you're called to do. We are the errands and herds of today's time. 21st century. That's who we are. Yes. That's what we do. Yes. It ain't no time to get tarred right now because the fight is on, y'all. Yes. The fight is on. Yes. Leaders are looking for people who bring solutions. You can't run to your pastor and talk about, Pastor, how do you want me to handle this? What you say? Now listen to me. Unless it's an extreme situation, if you are in leadership, don't worry about making mistakes. Make a decision. Yes. Leaders make decisions. You ain't got to be the brightest one in the room, but you have to make a decision. Yes. 
Let me tell you something. I got a 12th grade education. Ooh, I got some looks. I got a 12th grade education. But let me tell you something about that 12th grade education. Smart men marry up. Bam! Bam! Come on, Smart men marry up. She got a BA, she got her master's, and she getting ready to go for her PhD for my money get right. I bet I do. I bet I send her back to school if she want to go. As soon as God bless me, she going back to get her PhD. And she going to be Dr. D. Come on. Smart men marry up. Now don't try to take that. That's already in a pack. It's already in a pack. I'm going to use it. So here's, here's what the deal is. Do you bring solutions to your pastor? Amen. See, they don't, listen, if you're bringing problems, why do they have you? Why are you there? If you don't have a solution, or, or you can, listen, this is how I operate. I would handle the business at hand, and, 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 and I would go back to Bishop when he wasn't busy, and I would say to him, Pastor, this is what happened. This is how I handled it. I just wanted to make you aware. Right, right, right. right. That's right. Mm. Now let me say this: mm. If your pastor is getting ready to preach, right. you you <laughs> bet not. You bet not run in there with some mess. You bet, if you in leadership and you run in there with some mess, I hope they sit you down. There's a time and place for everything. And let me tell you something. I guarded Bishop when he was ready to preach. I didn't let no mess get in there. I, I figure out, find out what's going on. What, what? No, no, we'll talk about this after service. We can't talk about this right now. Oh, but I got to. No, you don't. No, no. I'm going to send you to Pastor so-and-so, but you're not going to talk to Bishop right now. Now you either take that or you you know you're not getting nothing right now. See, you got to protect your leader. Yes. You got to protect them, y'all. Yes, right. See, listen. I told Bishop. I said you don't have to be the bad guy. Come on. I'm the bad guy. See, you gotta have. Listen, I got, I still got a little Peter in me right now. <laughs> Now, now listen, now listen, every pastor needs a little Peter. You better believe it. Every pastor needs somebody to care enough about them to say, no, no, pastor, you ain't got to handle that. I got this. She should never have to confront it unless she says, that's okay, I got it. But somebody should be there saying, no, no, pastor, let me handle this for you. All this word you getting week in and week out, and you can't cover her? What's wrong with you? I can kick this. I can kick that. <laughs> What do you bring to the ministry? Do you bring anything to the ministry other than yourself? That means you got to be thinking on your feet. You got to be a decision maker, whether it's right or wrong. See, here's the thing about making a wrong decision. It enhances you to learn from that mistake that you make. 
Oh, I don't want. I don't want to. I, I don't want to do that. Why are you here? Why are you here? Oh, I, oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. That's the wrong decision. Why are you thinking like that? Why are you thinking like that? If you in leadership, leadership has a positive disposition. And they thinking all the time. All the time. You thinking on your feet. All the time. You got to make a decision. You can't. Okay. You can't be mealy mouth about decision making. If you are in leadership, make the decision and keep it moving. Amen? Amen. What do you bring to the ministry? <coughs> do you bring anything to the ministry? Or are you just dead? Count up the cost. Because there is a cost. Count up the cost for what you do. And you ain't got to show off. Just let your gift make room for you. Yes. Can you think on your feet? Yes. Quickly. Yes. Quickly. Yes. Quickly. Yes. Can you make a choice? A decision. <laughs> Quickly. Without being hesitant about what you got to do. Can you do that? Yes. See, that's what leadership does. Leadership thinks on their feet. I was in I was in the hotel with Bishop, and we were going to an event, and you know, collar stays that, that go up in your collar to hold your collar tight. We didn't have any. I said, I'll be darned, we ain't got none. I look in I look in the little basket that they had. They had Q-tips. I took the Q-tips, broke them off, and stuck them in his collar. He never knew that he didn't have collar stays. You got to think on your feet. We flew into D.C. one time, and the, and, and, and the cars weren't there, and everybody was panicking. Oh my God, the cards ain't here. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? I went inside, I said, send me a couple of cabs. <laughs> I, I put my bishop in a cab and got him to the hotel. And when I got through uh, dealing with the car dealership or the people that were supposed to pick us up, they had it. I let them have it. But you gotta think on your feet. Right. You got to be prepared for whatever happens. This is what leadership is, y'all. This is true leadership. If you're going to help your pastor, and you're going to be in leadership, and you're going to call yourself so-and-so, 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 then act like it. Amen? Amen. Versatility. The pastor covers the church. Y'all know that, right? Who covers the pastor? Who said that? What'd you say? Say it. Say it. Okay. The leaders of the church cover the pastor. Yes. See? Let me tell you something. Pastors don't have a whole lot of friends no way. They can't trust nobody. Everybody want to gossip about this. Child, she told me this. Oh my God, she told me that. Whatever you hear, keep your mouth shut. And as close as you are to her, I don't know who's the closest one to her, who's not the closest one. But if you're close to your leader, keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah. Some things you might have to take to your grave. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you can't do that, you're in the wrong position. Yeah. You're in the wrong position. See, 
They cover us all the time, but when they need some help, ain't nobody there. Come on now. If you in leadership, you got to cover your pastor. Pastor, how can I assist you? How can I make your job easier? How can I make your job better? What can I do to take any pressure off of you that's precious and so on? You don't have to ask what the pressure is. If they want to share it, they will. If not, make yourself available. That's what you do to cover your leader. Yes. It's time out for all of this foolishness. Y'all, we are in a fight. Are you multifaceted? I do windows, but I don't do floors. <laughs> Who are you to say something like that? Because you got a title. Let me tell you something. If you don't live up to what your title is, you ain't a nobody. Can you do more than one thing? Can you talk on the phone and type at the same time? I'm just asking. Get off of Facebook. Get off of Facebook and social media and you can do more. There's a time for social media. And when you're doing God's business, you can't be on social media. That's not being multifaceted. See, you got to wear more than one hat. Talking about, well, I don't do that. I'm in the union. <laughs> this is God's business, y'all. Yes, sir. There is no union. Whatever you can put your hand at to do, do it. Do it. Yes, that's it. See, I told y'all I'ma crush this devil's head. I come to crush him. Daily, daily. Just like a roach. Just like a roach. Try it sometimes. When you get up in the morning, say, devil, I'm coming after you. Just like that. Don't be intimidated. God got your back. Don't y'all know who God is? Yes. I wish I would be scared of him. <laughs> you must become liquid. Can anybody tell me what liquid is? Or what that means? Liquid, she, she almost said it. She said liquid of any form or shape. Liquid, you can pour liquid into anything. It forms into whatever it's poured into. That means that you got to be available at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. If pastor says, I was going right, and then she switched up and said, no, let's go left. Come on. You can't come with no attitude. Come on. Right. Mm. Right. This is the visionary, y'all. Right. You got to be prepared for whatever is required of you at the time that it's asked. Whatever is required of you, you got to be ready. That's what becoming liquid means. In a moment's notice, you got to make a decision. In a moment's notice, you change your mind. In a moment's notice, you're giving some more information. In a moment's notice, can you make it happen? The bottom line is to make this thing happen. No matter what. No matter what. 
I talked about armor bearers being a ghost. Get in and get out. You're not the focus of what people want to see. If you're going to serve, serve and get it done and get out the way. I've been doing this for the last 27 years. And finally God said to me, I'm going to take the light and put it on you now. It took me 27 years of serving and being a servant and not being manipulated by somebody speaking in your ear. I don't know why you're doing that, girl. You've been doing that for that church all this time and they ain't done nothing for you. Oh, I know how people talk. I know how they say it. Why you let them use you like that? They just using you. Let me tell you something about that. Misery loves company. Get caught up in it if you want to. See? And you're going to be right where they are. See? So think about what you're doing. If you're going to be that adjective, that armor bearer, you, you, you got to move in, move out. If you're working behind the scenes, work behind the scenes and get it done. God is giving the credit. As I told you before, I know we don't give enough of that of boys or pat on the back or thank yous. I know we don't. But God knows who you are. He knows every hair on your head. Every strain. Amen? Amen. Confidentiality. You know, sometimes we talk too much. And the reason we talk too much because we want people to think we're important. <laughs> So, in order for you to be important, you get to running off at your mouth with stuff that you ain't supposed to be talking about. And it's people out there that are so cunning that that's what they do. They don't go to your church, but they come into the church to find out what they can find out. Not divulging information to people that don't know, that don't need to know. That's good. You never give up. It. All you gotta do is say, "Sir, I'm not. I'm not familiar with that at all." You have to see so and so. Be very polite, very nice about it. No, sir, I'm just a driver, but I don't have any information to tell you about that, sir. I want to make you right comfortable. <laughs> now see, see, here, here's what you don't know. Sometimes they get a driver, and sometimes these are folks that are coming in to speak for you. Well, 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 well what y'all doing on Sunday? How many of y'all running on Sundays? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, well, what's going on with, with this and that? You don't give up none of that information. You, you're not at liberty to do that. All you say is, sir, I'm sorry. I can't answer any of those questions. I'm just a driver. That's how you shut them down nicely. Shut them right down. Just boop. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Giving information on a need to know basis only. If they don't need to know, you don't share the information. How do you know that they need to know? If you don't know, shut your mouth. Because if you 
needed to say something, you would have been given instructions. Follow the instruction that you are given. If you're not given no instructions, then don't do nothing. Don't get outside of your lane trying to be important. Stay right in your lane. Stay there. See, you, listen, if you stay in your lane, you safe. But you, you, listen, if you get outside your lane trying to be important, you're going to say something you ain't supposed to say. It happens all the time. All the time. Folks get outside of their lane trying to be important. Then they mess up. Then guess what they do? <laughs> I, I didn't mean to say it, but I said something I shouldn't have said. <laughs> you should have kept your mouth shut. You shouldn't have been opening your mouth talking about how important you are. The devil just tricked you. Know how to listen, but not to repeat or discuss. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. See, there might be times that your pastor might see if she can trust you. Now, she might say something just to see whether or not she can trust you. And it might take her a minute to see it, whether or not, because she can watch the movie. She gonna watch the movie. And if you slip up and tell somebody, then it's gonna come full circle back to her. And she already know who told it. She already know she can't trust you. So now she gotta get rid of you. They have to get rid of you. Cause you can't hold nothing. See? Being discreet with information regarding your leaders, personal information, and their families. Some folks don't even think that's important. Yet Jimmy's nine and Sarah's ten and they got uh, three kids and I think Betty is two. They had a problem with Betty, but uh, you know, I think they done worked it out. <laughs> Now you giving out some information and you don't even know who you giving it to. It could be a predator. But you trying to be important. You trying to show somebody that you got some knowledge. And you dumb as a box of rocks. You can't give out information if it's not needed. Leadership. Humble yourself before all people. Humility is what took me where I'm at. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. I told you what God told me. He said, if you humble yourself, I'll take you places you've never been before. Humble yourself before God and before God's people. And watch and see what God will do to you. If you do that, God will take you. He can use you anywhere, any way, any type, any how. No room for hidden agendas. I talked about it, but I'm going to say something else. If you have a hidden agenda, we casting that thing down in the name of Jesus today. Now, that don't mean that you can't ask for forgiveness. Just say, go to God. Don't come to me talking about deep. Yeah, I had it. Yeah, I did it. No, I'm not God. So don't come to me. Go to God and confess your sins and start over. Because we don't cast those hidden agendas down. It's not going to work. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Wow. 
How can you lead if you're never willing to follow? How can you call yourself a leader and you've never followed anything or anybody? And you got all the answers. You ain't got all the answers. This is the visionary of this house. Whatever she says, you got to follow it. See, that were times I didn't always agree with, with Bishop Jakes. I didn't always agree with him. But guess who I went to? I went to God. See, sometimes they're not going to share everything with you. Because you wouldn't be able to handle it anyway. Y'all, pastoring is tough. It's tough, y'all. Y'all have no idea how hard pastoring is. Get up under your leader and undergird them to the best of your ability. Yes. Only one job in the kingdom, that's the servant. Our leaders never stop serving. They serve in a different capacity. Pastor Purnell has not stopped serving. She's serving on a different level now. And you say, well, she don't do nothing but come in and preach on Wednesdays and Sundays. How do you know that? You don't know the business meetings that she's in. You don't know the commissioners that she's dealing with and talking with over the city. You don't know nothing. But you throw that out there. Keep your mouth shut. The servant covers the pastor. And the one thing that I said is, is don't become too common with the person that you serve. Yes. They can be, your pastor can be as common with you as they want to. But in return, you are not allowed to do it. Bishop was just as common with me as he wanted to be. Yes, sir. No, sir. I got you, sir. What you need, sir. It was never. What's up, Doc? Right. Right. Hey, homie. Right. Right. It was never that. Don't lose your position because you got a friendship here. Okay. This is above friendship, y'all. Well, I've known her for 45 years. So what? You ain't got no right to talk like that. Especially in public. Now what y'all do in private, that's y'all's business. But publicly, it should be pastor. Yes ma'am. No ma'am. All of those things go in order with servitude. Serving while sick. I talked about this a little bit earlier. I, I found out that I went on dialysis in 2001. I didn't get a kidney until 2004. They gave me a set of baby kidneys. They gave me two of them. And when I woke up from the surgery, this is what the Holy Spirit said. He said, I'm giving you double for your trouble. Wow. 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 See, I walk in favor, y'all. Yes. I walk in favor. Yes. You can walk in favor, too. But you ain't going to walk in favor unless you ask for it. Amen. You got to ask for this thing. Yes. So back then, he gave me two kidneys for the price of one. Amen. I kept them for, for eight years, and I lost them in 2012 when I went into ICU. Wow. Wow. Over a decade of sickness. It was more than a decade. It was two decades of sicknesses. Now listen, sometimes when you're sick, are you really sick? Uh -huh. Are you playing games? Uh -huh. Oh, I don't feel good. Right. 
sometimes you got to push your way through that. Yes. See, God want to know if he can trust you. Yes. And God will say, they're not ready for this. Let them go on about their See, he's not going to force nothing on you that you don't want. Ooh. That God don't force nothing on you that you don't want. You got to want this thing. As sick as I was, I said to God, I said, God, I can't be sick like this because you called me to this. Amen. Guess what he said to me? He said, I got you. If you're serving while you're sick, sometimes you got to go to God for yourself. Yes. Quit going to pastor for everything. Yes. Lay hands on yourself and cast it down. Lay hands on your spirit and call it out. Going to pass over. Oh, I got a sore on my finger. <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> Lay hands on yourself. Call it out yourself. You got power. Use the power that's already in you. Went to God and said, God, I can't do this being on the road and be sick. God said, I got you. When God said that to me, I didn't look back. I did dialysis on the road. I took shots of insulin on the road. I didn't care what I was doing. <laughs> this is the work of the Lord. Yes. Yes. My wife will tell you, I was a workaholic. Working 16, 18-hour uh, days. Sometimes I worked 22 hours. Wow. Couldn't hardly see. And I know I shouldn't have been doing it, but I did it anyway. And God has blessed me where I ain't got to do that no more. Amen. I ain't got to work them hours like that no more. But when you build in the kingdom, there's a sacrifice that has to be made. We was building a kingdom. We come out of a storefront, y'all. A storefront. About the size of this room. And now we minister to millions of people all over the world. Somebody got to sacrifice. Yes. Yes. Unwavering faith and human survival. You got to have the faith of a mustard seed. Do y'all know how small that faith of a mustard seed? You can't even see it. And everybody talking about, yeah, child, I got much faith. Ooh, my faith is big. Shut your mouth. All right. Just shut up. All right. If you just have the faith of a mustard seed, God's got the rest of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. If he didn't mean it, he wouldn't have put it in his word. Yeah. And listen, I'm going to talk a little bit about human survival. I'm going to talk a little bit about human survival. Human survival is when, it, 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 it's not just faith alone, but it's, it's, it's when your life is a critical, yeah. critical stages. Great example is when we lost our son 11 years ago. 29 years old, he went into his apartment, some boys broke in, put him on his knee, shot him in his head. Because they didn't like him. See, that's human survival right there for us because we almost went crazy. Yeah. Amen. Sure. We went to counseling for three and a half years. My whole family, my wife, me, my daughter, my grandma, I mean my uh, mother-in-law, all of us went to counseling for three and a half years. I didn't care what people said. I know that's right. right. I know that's right. Oh, you going to a quack. Oh, you cooking yourself. Shut up! Right. Yeah. Wait till you go through what I just went through. Pray fast and pray. Think ahead. Plan fast. Pray. 
for your leaders. Amen. Noah planned ahead of the ark. Genesis 6 and 14. The ants planned ahead of the harvest. Wow. Proverbs 6 and 6. The Bible tells us to fast and pray. Matthew 17 and 21. These are some of the things that we have to do. Now listen, let me say this about fasting and praying. Especially for those that are sick. Now, uh, sometimes you can't fast and pray because you have to eat some food with your medicine. But you can turn that TV off. You can come off of social media. See, fasting ain't praying, ain't just eat. Or you can eat a little healthier. You ain't got to get a hamburger every day. Maybe go to some soup. Eat soup for two weeks. See, that's fasting and praying. See, let some of this stuff go that we just have to die for. Oh, child, I got to have that. If I don't have that, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm just being truthful with you. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. Relationships. These are the people that had great relationships and served their leaders. Joshua served Moses and became the successor. David served King Saul and became King David. Elijah served Elisha and got a double portion. Ruth served Naomi and she has a book in the Old Testament. See, so don't tell me about serving. Let me give you an, even an up-to-date modern 21st century. My pastor is an author. Yes. Many of books out there, million sellers. I became an author almost two years ago. Mm. See, see how I'm following the lead? Right. Yes, yes. See how I'm following the lead? Right. I never knew that I was an author until God placed it in me. I was 57 years old before he made me an author. Wow. Don't box God in. Yes. Do not box him in. Am I a million sellers? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. See, I, listen, I already told God, do what you do, God. You're the best at what you are and who you are. Do what you do. I'm going to be the best at me. Right. Amen. Greatness. You don't have to be famous to be great. Most people want 15 minutes of fame. That's a facade, y'all. That's a facade. Greatness lies within us. I put on the question, do you want 15 minutes of fame or do you want greatness for a lifetime? Greatness, this is what Bishop said in my book. Greatness is contagious. You will catch it if you get around it. Yes, yes, yes. You'll catch it. You catch it. Yes. All you got to do is get around greatness. Thank yes. you, Lord. Greatness is in Pastor Purnell. Yes. 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 See, let me let me tell y'all something. That was so phony. <laughs> See, I, see, I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna put you right on the spot. I'm gonna put you right on the spot because you say, "Yeah, I guess she got a little greatness." I guess, I guess she, greatness is in Pastor Pamela. Y'all 
better not play with me. Don't play with me. See, I pray for discernment all the time. That was so phony. Uh, why are you here? Why are you here? See, it's time out for playing games, y'all. Right, right. If you get around it, you're going to catch it. Greatness is in all of us. If I'd have said greatness was in you or you or you, then oh! Ah! Ah! See? Now let me show you why greatness is in you. Let me show you. You don't have to be famous to be great. When you read Genesis 1, 26 and 27, he said, I formed you in the likeness in the image of me. He formed us in the likeness and the image of him. Now, if you ain't got, if you just would have common sense, Yes. Yes. Just, just so common sense. Common sense to tell you right there that greatness is in you. Yes. Now here's what you got to know about greatness. Greatness is not going to sit on the surface of your life. You have to dig it out. The same way that they go in and dig out rubies and pearls and diamonds and emeralds. The same way you got to ask God, God get this greatness out of me. God, show me where the greatness is at. I know it's in me because you said in your word that you made me in your likeness and your image. Ask him to show you where the greatness is at. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think I was great. I'd be doing something else. But because of the greatness that's in me, I can stand up here and do this all day long. All day yes. long. Yes. yes. Watch me. Watchmen on the wall. Yes. I'm currently serving in a different capacity, but whenever I'm on the property in the presence of my pastor, I'm the watchman on the wall. I like that. When you come on the property of your church, you should be a watchman on the wall. Yes. yes. You cannot be lackadaisical about coming in here. That's right. Well, shoot, I, you know, I should have came the day and night. I tell you. Whew, child. I tell you, it's a rough day today. Number one, you're looking down. Yes. Number two, yeah. somebody hit you right in the head. Right. <laughs> whether you on church property or whether you're at the grocery store. Pay attention to your presence. Yes. I tell my wife and daughter all the time, pay attention to where you are. Pay attention what your surroundings are. Act like you know what you're doing. Yes. People look for folks that are lackadaisical. They look for folks. I wish they would try to jump on my wife. My wife, let me tell you something. My wife, would they would be in for a shock of their life. Because I prepped her to stay ready, stay on point at all times. And if you're going to be the watchman on the wall, act like the watchman on the wall. Amen? Amen. Amen. The leader should always be aware of the surroundings, no matter how high and anointed the service is. The leader must be kept, keep their guard up. Now, you're going to be in services that the anointing will fall, and I'm not saying that you can't go in, but if you go in, somebody better be covered. Everybody can't go in. 
Now, I know it's a high service, and you might not have that, but once or twice a, a month, that high service comes. Oh, 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 oh. Who's watching? Who's paying attention? All I'm saying is, if you if you really got to go in, tap Jimmy. Jimmy, I got you the wall. I got to go in. I got to go in. This one, listen, this one is on me so heavy that I can't hold this. That's good. But let somebody know. If you on your post, let somebody know. I can't hold this one, y'all. I got to go in. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. This is the last thing right here. This is the note for leaders. If it don't challenge you, it won't change. If it don't challenge you, you're not going to be changed. So quit whining about the challenge and expect the change. God is on our side, y'all. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Who knows that but God? If you expect to be changed, Expect to be challenged. Amen. Wow. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen.